Okay, I'm gonna to talk to you today about something called key person risk. I learned about this when I was selling my info product business. Key person risk is basically you are in charge of your business, you're running it, you founded it, and you go to sell your business and they look in your business and they identify that you are the one person that keeps the business running and if you were to remove yourself that the business wouldn't hum. Now there's one more stage that people think they've removed key person risk but they haven't and that is you've removed yourself in that you're not in the business, you're working on your business, you have a team of people, everybody's fairly and you don't really work that much, maybe four hours a week, maybe you're not working at all but there's still key person risk in other different areas whether you are the face of the program or you are the genius behind the program or you're taking most of the profit. This idea of key person risk is something that I didn't even think of until I learned from our bankers and lawyers and accountants that we needed to remove key person risk as the first domino to selling the business, which was really hard for me because the entire business was centered around me and it was also centered around my expertise. And even though I thought I removed myself by having a team of people, selling on the phones, even creating content. So I saw these two worlds collide, info products, mergers and acquisitions, and right in the center of that Venn diagram there is key person risk. If I look back, it really had a lot to do with some things that I went to about relinquishing control. So people that are really close to me know that relinquishing control is one of the most difficult things for me to do. Maybe because I have a music background, maybe because I'm a perfectionist, maybe because I think that if I do it, then it'll be better than if anybody else does it. I have a fear of letting go of control and trusting other people. And that has always been difficult for me. And as you're thinking about running your info product business, this is something you'll run into whether you like it or not, is key person risk. So the first time I experienced this, I built the business in a way that I was doing the program, I was doing the coaching, I built the website, I did all this stuff. I hired some contractors, but they were really working for me and they just basically just did whatever I told them to do, right? So that was an exercise relinquishing control, but it wasn't until I handed somebody my ads account and they just took it and ran with it that I really felt like relinquishing control. So the person who I handed my ads to was a guy called Jordan Menard. He's the CEO of Motif Digital. He's arguably one of the best people at ads in the game. He ran ads for like Robert Kiyosaki, Sam Ovens, Donald Trump, some of the biggest names in the industry, honestly, and he still does and he crushes it. He just so happened to be a really good friend of mine. So when I handed off the ads to him, it was like the scariest thing ever. I knew he was good at what he did, but I had this methodical way of thinking through it, right? I had a very specific avatar and I needed to target them. And what he did was he came in and said, listen, one audience, just whoop, big top of funnel, one audience, let's go. And I think the keyword of the audience was just mastering because we were selling a mastering business. And it was just boom, one audience. And it was uncomfortable to me because it means that I had to change my messaging and maybe I get people in the funnel that aren't great. He taught me this thing called cracking cold, where if you can crack cold your funnel from getting somebody absolutely cold to buying a program within a day, then you've pretty much done it. But it was the start of my journey, not necessarily just of removing key person risk, which is the term that I learned later. That was difficult. They were doing things that I didn't want them to do, but I really should have just listened to them. Would have been a lot easier if I would just would have trusted them. Kind of fast forwarding a little bit, the next bottleneck, as you might know, if you're in this info space, is if you're running ads, then your calendar's full, which means that the next step of your journey is you're on the phone 24 seven trying to sell your program. So that was me, I was selling it, and I'm really good at sales. I was the face behind the company, and I, built the company around my expertise. So I just knew how to sell this. I was like, this is really good. I'm making lots of money and I don't really want to remove myself because this is my baby. I don't want somebody else selling it. And while I liked the idea of removing myself and getting off the phones, it still was something that I wasn't excited about. Because think about the benefits of actually being able to remove yourself from the phones. You've got the product, you're selling it. Somebody else is running the ads, taking care of traffic somebody else is selling on your behalf, what in the world are you doing? <laughs> really at that point in the business, I was just showing up to like my leverage group coaching calls and improving the product every once in a while and doing some marketing here or there and just taking money and investing it, honestly. So that sounds good, right? That was the light at the end of the tunnel, but 
I handed it off to one guy who started selling and it was like, it didn't go well. That's when I realized I need to get really good at managing and training a sales team. Got a really good killer team and Ultimately, at the end of my journey with that company, they were actually running the business. And I set it up that way so that they could feel empowered to lead and do that without me. So that was still painful of hearing the call recordings of people trying to sell something and just hearing them do everything wrong. But in order for me to sort of evolve as a leader, I realized that growth comes from removing yourself, which means it's people, not just systems. It's team, not just your product. So I had to pour into them and become full-time sales manager of them. And that was before I handed it off to anybody else. They just need to be dialed in. So that felt scary and weird where I would log off of those sales meetings and then they would just go and sell. And I would sit back and go, oh, I just hope they do a good job. But the reality is when I handed out the ads, boom, skyrocketed, right? When I handed off the sales to another team, boom, skyrocketed. Maybe I could have done ads my way and better. Maybe I could have stand on the phones and how to hire close rate, but that's just fueling me, my ego, and thinking that I can do everything better. Fine, maybe I could, but knowing that the end is selling your business, that the first thing that goes is to remove yourself, why not just overcome that from the beginning and go, I'm building this and starting this with the reality knowing that if I look for ways to remove myself, the business is gonna grow and I'm gonna get lifestyle back, I'm gonna just get my cash flow back, and then I'm gonna have an asset. So that's the key person risk that I'm talking about. Starting it while removing yourself is the way to grow. Okay, so a more real time like experience that I had where I was really gut-wrenching about a certain decision about relinquishing control was the time that I was thinking about partnering with my business partner. He had a business that was doing similar revenue to me, I had a business that was doing similar to his, and we were looking at this as one plus one equals three. We could grow this. Imagine if both of these businesses were under this one business. We would double our revenue, and then combining our teams, we'd probably quadruple our revenue because everybody's focused on one thing. I saw that as a way to grow as well. But I remember he was like, why do you want to do this? And I was so glad I was in tune enough to say, I think the way that I grow as a human being is to relinquish control, because I've seen it in these other areas of my life. And this is the ultimate relinquishing of control, right? Handing over the business, going 50-50 on something. I just knew that if I signed up for that, the business would grow, for sure. But I, then I looked back and realized the times where everything with growth happened, it was always centered around relinquishing control. And this was the next step of faith that I needed to make. That was super scary, that was strange, but it was the best thing for the business. Two businesses succeeding, multiple seven figures, combining it, it blows up. However, there's people in this space who don't want to partner because they're afraid to relinquish control. And I think if you're able and willing to relinquish control, then your business is just gonna skyrocket. Fast forwarding a bit down the journey, the next part that really scared everything out of me was the time that I gave profit share to my team members I started to see what is the next 10, 20, 30 years of this business look like? And I really had to make a few crucial decisions there, which was I need to shift from just doing paid ads to organic. I need to make way more YouTube videos and way more appearances on podcasts. The reason why is I would reach my total addressable market, but then also if we shifted that way, we'd have two different ways that we could acquire customers, right? Organic and then with paid. The whole reason why I was thinking about this is because I was trying to sell the business. So in order for that business to be sold, top line revenue needed to go up. Again, the key person risk removed. Bottom line revenue goes up as well. And there needs to be a multiple attached to your bottom line and have the team be owners, not just contractors. So the way that I saw it was, okay, great. If I can get all these guys to create YouTube videos then like that increases our output into the market, which decreases our ad spend because we're getting customers not through paid ads, which increases our bottom line. We can create a feedback loop between ads, our product, our content. And if we had people incentivized on those things that I'm incentivized with, which is bottom line profit, top line revenue, then we could hit our target, right? Our North Star, which is ultimately selling. And 
if we had the entire program redone and have them be the face of it, not me, then it's just gonna make everything easier. It really was allowing the business to grow into what it needed to be is when I removed myself. Anyways, I saw all that and I figured, okay, how do I incentivize them to do all this stuff? Simple, effective way that I saw through it was they just all need to be incentivized on bottom line profit. That's the way to do this. Again, this is a cash flow business. And if we incentivize on bottom line cash flow, that will make this business an asset, especially if they're doing it, not me. That was the first thing I saw. And the second thing I saw was they were all in their lanes. I took out the lanes and just said, we're all in this together. We need to learn some hard skills, hard and soft skills, like ads, YouTube, all that stuff. So basically the entire team members that I had, which honestly, most of them were just my students. They were willing to really die for the company because the program changed their life and now they're working for the program, which is really cool. Once you remove those barriers and once I poured into them and trained them on how to sell, and do ads and all this other stuff and make YouTube videos, then they just took it and ran with it and they became cross-functional generalists. It forced them to work together as a team. At that moment, I saw my business be taken from me. Now, why do I say it like that extreme? The reality was I was giving it to them, but it felt like it was being taken from me because it was difficult for me to relinquish control. Once I showed them that big picture kind of file that I had and showed them how it all work and the numbers would work and their new roles, to my surprise, they loved it. If that never happened, the business would have never taken off and then sold as well and ultimately be set up to sold again, most likely. But that needed to happen. Again, as I'm looking back, I'm seeing the through line of relinquishing control and key person risk is so important to growth in the info product space. And I think once you start going at this and start growing, Thinking about how to remove yourself isn't just to get your life back or get your time back or whatever. It's actually to grow the business. It's really the only way to do it, at least from my experience. And then I guess finally, the final step of relinquishing control was selling my business. So I'll tell you about the time I sold my business. I was working so hard to get the business to a place where I was removing key person risk, but I just remember the day that it was sold and all the assets were handed over. So I wasn't doing anything in the business, but I still owned it. And then once I left, it's not like my life changed. I was functionally out of the business, but just the fact that I didn't own it anymore, or at least I owned a much smaller portion, that was now internal relinquishing control. That was very difficult for me. That fear and that sort of insecurity and not being able to own the business or exiting or winning at the game or whatever, that all sounds great. Now that I'm building the business, I need to be in control of everything again and do it differently. It's how do I relinquish control earlier on and be okay with that so that we can all grow faster. I'm realizing that with a team of people, it's so much more fun, easier, if you're willing to submit yourself to relinquishing control. It's so difficult in this industry because your offer, your information you're selling, all of that should be centered around you, your expertise and all that. But that switch of getting yourself out of the business is the only way to grow. So that's been my experience on relinquishing control, removing key person risk, and I hope it's been helpful for you as you hit this sort of 100K month mark in your info product space. Just something to not only think about, but start implementing in yourself and in your business. I'll see you in the next one.